uh, we're going to, here's what we're going to talk about today. The, the, the title of this message is, There Is. Can we say that phrase together? There is. And this is a prophetic pattern in Kings, 1 Kings 18. And I believe this is a picture of exactly where we're living right now. And I say a prophetic pattern because this is not the prophetic pattern. I, every, we see, you know, when it comes to prophecy, God gives us, he, we were able to see in part and prophesy in part. But I'm grateful for the little slice that God has given me, and I want to share the slice that God has given me today and, and pass it on to you. But this is certainly not the prophetic pattern, but it's a prophetic pattern that I think is very clear in 1 Kings chapter 18. This is about Elijah, and of course we're familiar with him as a, an amazing Old Testament prophet. And here's the, here's the verses we want to focus on this morning. Uh, let me read these. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of the abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, This is Elijah's servant, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and, wind, and there was a heavy rain. You know, I love the phrase about how God gives the early and the latter rains. Well, I'm telling you, the latter rains are going to be a heavy rain. How many of us, I believe we're living in a day when there'll be an absolute downpour of God's Spirit. That's one of the reasons. You know, despite the craziness of the world, that's why we can be so excited about living in a time like this, because there will be a heavy rain. And now let's, let's take a look at this again. You can see that I've, I've underscored uh, several phrases here. If there's three, three times in this short passage of scriptures where it says, there is the sound of the abundance of rain in verse 41. In verse 43, there is nothing. In verse 44, there is a cloud. The size of a man's hand. And then when we add the last verse 45, there was a heavy rain. Now what do we make? Look, let's take a look at, at these phrases and see what it might tell us. Okay, here's the first one. This is... This is the word of the Lord that came through Elijah uh, out of verse 41. Then Elijah said to Ahab, okay? Now, we know who Elijah is. I think all of us know that I, Ahab was a, he was the current king, the reigning king of Israel at that time, and he was, he was one of the wind, ones that the Bible would say, and he did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He was a very wicked king. Now, he had a moment of repentance later in his life. And if that's a picture of God's grace, Ahab repented, and what did God do? I see repentance, and he responded to that. But this time, he was a very, very wicked king. He also had a very, very wicked wife whose name was Jezebel. Okay, so here is the word of the Lord. There is the sound of the abundance of rain, okay? Now, where, where are they... You know, we've, we've just been in, during a summer, we had like 105 degrees almost every day for two months. It didn't rain for two months. You know, my grass was burning up. I'm just not sure, you know, we were trying to keep our trees alive and our grass alive. Well, this isn't, we just went through two months of a very hot, dry summer. They're in the midst of how much time without rain? Three years. More than three years, okay? So... Uh, here is a prophetic word that the Lord gives to Elijah saying, there is the sound of the abundance of rain. Now this is not a meteorological statement. This is what? A prophetic statement about what he's hearing from God. And you know what I want to say and proclaim today? There is the sound of the abundance of rain in our day. Can we say it together? There is the sound of the abundance of rain. Okay? And, you know, it's Elijah prophetically could say, I can hear, I can hear that, I can hear that rain, okay? We've seen the Lord move prophetically with rain before. Uh, last summer when we've been through like weeks and weeks and weeks of, you know, 100 plus uh, 
weather and no rain. We prayed in here one morning for rain, and we there was that was one of those forecasts. There was the big H. You could go outside and you could see the big H up in there in the sky, and it was supposed to be up there for another two weeks. There was the, the chance of rain that day was zero percent. We walked out of church, and what we what we walk into a downpour. There was the sound of the abundance of rain that day. I don't know how broad that rain was, but God, if God says there's going to be an abundance of rain, it doesn't matter what the weatherman says. You know what we're going to get? We're going to get the abundance of rain. So prophetically, Elijah was saying, I can hear the sound of rain. You know what I want to proclaim this morning? I can hear the sound of rain. I can hear the sound of God's spiritual rain over a dry and thirsty land. So... So that's the first step. Is there was the prophetic, uh, there was the prophetic word that there's rain is coming. Here's the second one. The uh, the the servant goes out there. He looks up at the sky and what does he say? There ain't nothing. Hey Elijah, you, you said you're talking about all this rain. I don't see anything. Okay. All right. That's what the servant said. And we know Elijah said, keep going out there and keep looking and seven times he went out and saw nothing and elijah kept saying go again go again and on the seventh time he went out there is a cloud the size of a man's hand there is okay now all this is i believe is giving us a pattern of how to respond to prophetic things okay are we living in a day when hundreds of prophecies will be fulfilled in all likelihood? Absolutely. You know, if you live in the day when Jesus came and his life was there and, and he was living and doing miracles and he was headed towards Jerusalem for his crucifixion, there were hundreds of prophecies that were filled in that day. And there will be hundreds of prophecies filled in the day we're living in right now so we may not understand it all, but God help us to learn how to navigate, you know, prophetic things. You know, if we write software or something like that, we may not understand it, but we, if we study it, we will we'll be, better be able to deal with prophecy or learning French or whatever. But God wants us to be able to be more and more familiar with how to navigate his, what he is saying prophetically. What he's saying, and there's, the Bible is full of prophecies about the day we're living in. And so, here's the third step in this journey is where the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the servant goes out and sees a small cloud. By the way, this verse means something to me uh, personally. It was years ago when I went to the uh, library of the city of Fort Worth downtown. It was the middle of a hot summer. And it was, you know, one of the 100-degree days, and there was uh, not a, almost not a cloud in the sky. So I want to see what page. This Bible is a Bible is outside of the library and it has a, you know one of those big old Bibles that's you know this big and, and it had a page open. I said, I'm gonna just go see what's on the page that happens to be open. So what was open there was first Kings eighteen. And the first thing that I read was this verse, there is the cloud the size of a man's hand. And so I'm I'm looking and says, Well, that's intriguing. And here I'm on this hot July day. Zero chance of rain. We're in the middle of a drought. So I can't. I, I got to look up. I looked up. Straight above me was a tiny little cloud. Because I believe, and I believe God was just giving me a light. When I say I'm going to do something, you may not see it yet in your circumstances, but I will do. I will fulfill what I've spoken to you. Which brings us to the. And again, if we can say, I see a cloud. Can we say that together? I see a cloud. We can see it, Lord. And the fulfillment of this, it says, it happened in the meantime. Well, we're going to see the meantime fulfilled in front of our eyes. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But we will see the meantime fulfilled in front of our eyes. That the sky became black with clouds and winds, and there was a heavy rain. So that's the four. Let's take a look. At this pattern so here's a very very simple pattern that we can understand that god gives a prophetic insight he has a word 
And we pray that if God wants to speak anything to us about what's in store for you, for your family, for, for our nation, that we have ears to hear and that we read the prophecies that are in the Bible and also recognize that there are legitimate people who have prophetic gifts uh, who speak. And will God give us a sermon to find out which ones we should listen to? Because there are, and God, by the way, God, one of the, one of the, one of the gifts that God wants to give to people just like us is the gift of prophecy. First Corinthians 12. God, we pray to you pour out your spirit of prophecy on whoever you want to, including us. That's a, a, a gift you want us to have to be able to have a simple, encouraging message. We're not. We just pray, pour it out on us in Jesus' name. By the way, that's uh, the gift of prophecy is talked about in 1 Corinthians 12. Is not trying to get somebody else to live their life according to what you said. It's to bring an encouragement to them and lift them up. Okay? So, but God is speaking prophetically through his word and through people just like us. So the pattern we just take a look at is God gives a prophetic insight, and at first there's nothing to see. You know, if we put seeds in the ground, you know, we're going to grow lima beans or copra or whatever. We don't go out the next morning and expect to see full, full grown. There's a timing that's involved. And so at first we're comfortable with the fact that we don't see it yet, but we believe it, that God will fulfill. And then at some point God will give us a glimpse. Go, oh, this is getting exciting. Because it's coming. And then we see the fulfillment of God's word. And I believe prophetically God wants to walk us through this pattern where he may give you, a, give you or somebody else a, a prophetic word and we proclaim it even though we don't see anything yet and that we in God's time, we can recognize when God's given the, uh, you know, begins to fulfill his word and then we'll see everything that he said come to pass. And this is a pattern that I believe we'll see Many times, and God help us to be able to walk to see how you move prophetically in our day. Amen? Now, there's a PS we want to put on to, to put onto this. And here is verse 46, where it says, The hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Israel to the entrance of Jezreel. So this is, the Lord gave uh, Elijah, supernatural ability to run. I mean, just think about this. How many of us? I mean, I've, I've just, I've just finished recently. I, I did a uh, an athletic event, and I really enjoy that. I can still, I thank God, my knees. Uh, you know, my, I can still run and ride, and just enjoy, you know, doing all that. But you know, I've never been. I've, I've been running in various ways my entire life, adult life. But I can't run or outrun a chariot. And there's only one, only one way anybody can outrun a chariot, and that's what? If God gives an anointing that takes us beyond what we could possibly do with our own efforts. Well, part of the fulfillment of this prophetic pattern is when the fulfillment comes and God has done what he has said, he gives us the ability to do our part, which is far beyond what we could do with our own efforts. How many of us want to live in the excitement of, of the days like today when we're living in prophetic days? These are the days of Elijah. The dry bones becoming as flesh. And the way, this is where we are living. So if we can be part of God's you know, prophetic cycle, God will enable us to do things that we couldn't possibly do on our own. How many of us want to be able to run ahead of evil? This God enabled Elijah to be able to run ahead of some evil king with what he was going to do. He enabled him to supernaturally get there. God wants to use us for such a time as this to be able to run ahead supernaturally and get his work done. As we've said many times, God doesn't need you or me for anything, but the joy and the wonder is he actually lets us and invites us to be part of what he's doing. So, Lord, we say we're in. We want to be part of walking out this cycle. So just to add a PS to this from... These last uh, six verses of uh, 1 Kings 18, God's prophetic insight, God speaks. We, may not, we don't see it yet. God brings, gives us a glimpse, and then there's the full-blown fulfillment of what God said, and he will enable us to take action. So, God, these are exciting times. Let us be able to walk in this. 
So that's this prophetic cycle that I just encourage you to meditate on, see what the Lord would show you. This is not the only one. There's many places we get a similar. Maybe they have a slightly different emphasis. But this is one that's exciting to me from 1 Kings 18. And what I want to spend a few minutes here now is talking about the context of 1 Kings 18, where this prophetic cycle comes from, because, again, I believe this is right where we're living. Here is, let me pick this up actually in 1 Kings 17. Here's where the word of the Lord came, another word of the Lord came to uh, Elijah, and he came to the king and said, there's be neither dew, dew nor rain until the Lord says so. Okay, and that was the beginning of a cycle of over three years in which there was no rain. Can you imagine what it was like for the farmers and ranchers to not be able to have any water for three years? So that's the beginning of the word of the Lord speaking. And so that's the context. And we know, we know we're very familiar with Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who call by name will humble themselves and pray, and that's the, there's a way that God will heal, supernaturally heal the land based on that beautiful promise. Most of us aren't as familiar as the preceding verse talks about this. When God shuts up heaven and there is what? There is no rain. Does that mean every time it doesn't rain there's, you know, some kind of God's, you know, judgment on the land? No, but it certainly can be. And many times in the Old Testament, one of the ways that God brought his, his judgment on Israel was withholding rain. And so... That was certainly the case here where the Elijah had this word about it's not, there's not going to be rain in this land until I say so. And it's right out of this verse out of Chronicles. But continuing on, let's, let's pick up in the beginning of 1 Kings 18, that here is three years later, and the Lord speaks to Elijah and said, the time for rain to come back is here. Now, the context here is where it seems like things are really stacked against the good guy, okay? We know that there was another prophet by the name of Obadiah, and he had hidden a 100 prophets and uh, hidden them in caves. Why had Obadiah hidden all these prophets? Because Jezebel was killing the prophets, okay? So it looked like evil kind of had the upper hand at this point. Is this bearing any resemblance to anything in anybody's world, Okay. So, now, here's a perspective that's right at it today. Ahab comes to, uh, to Elijah, and it says, he's, here's Elijah, the most powerful man of God on the planet, and what, is, what does the king Ahab have to say to Elijah? You're the bad guy. You're the problem. You're the troubler of Israel. We don't want to listen to those kind of lies, right? Now, Elijah had the wherewithal and the, and the wisdom to say, nope. I'm not the trouble of trouble of Israel, but you are. You are the one, and Ahab had led the nation to do two things. One is forsake the commandments of the Lord and follow the Baal. Forsake God and follow the Baal. Is this bearing any resemblance to the world that we live in today? Here we are, you know. Just got to have an answer for a day like that. He had an answer for that back then. He's got an answer today. Who wins? God wins. And he's looking for people just, God's going to win whether we participate or not, but God's looking for faithful people. We say, Lord, we're in. We want to be part of what you're doing. And we, we saw just a minute ago that there was, hundreds, there was 100 prophets of the Lord. We find out here in this verse how many of the uh, Baal prophets were there. 850, 450 plus 400. So it seems like the odds were kind of stacked against the good guys here, okay? Now, here's where I think it even more and more resembles the day that we're living in. And, and I hope that putting this in context gives us a greater hunger to say, God, you're speaking prophetically through your word and through us in these days. We want to walk into what you're speaking prophetically in our day. Because that's part of the way you're going to equip us to be overcomers and triumph and see many people... Not just us, the overcomers, but to bring many people into the kingdom of God who are working against the Lord now. So here's where they got all the children of Israel together. Now there's two or three million people 
I presume that this is kind of a figurative that this says all the children of Israel. It would be pretty tough to get a few million people on this Mount Carmel. I don't know how big Mount Carmel is, but at least figuratively, all the children of Israel were gathered. And they were going to be able to witness what this confrontation between good and evil. And it says, underscoring this thing of all the people, Elijah came to all the people, and he speaks to the people and says, How long will you falter? If God be God, serve him, and if Baal be God, serve him. And we've seen right now, and just what we've reviewed over these verses, that there's really there was three people in Israel in that day. There is the handful of people who were serving God with all their heart. Or there was the people who were serving God with all their heart. There was the people who were serving Baal with all their heart. And there was a whole group in the middle who weren't sure what to do. I believe that's exactly where we're living right now. And I believe we'll see many of the people in the middle come to the Lord. And I believe we'll see many of the people even serving evil right now come to the Lord. Because God loves people. Amen? And... Here's a very pivotal question that, that Elijah asked. How long will you falter between two opinions? I believe that's what the Lord is speaking to America right now. Make up your mind. Which, which direction are you going to turn? The door to turn to you is wide open. By the way, we saw a message to a church in, in South Africa here this last week, and they were. I, I know that every nation on the earth is going through the same challenge, you know, uh, but uh, how long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, do what? Follow Him. And if Baal, follow Him. Now, it's very interesting. What was the response here? Nothing. The people answered not a word, okay? At this point. So they didn't know how to respond to this challenge. But God knew what He was setting up, okay? We continue. We know that the, uh, they went through this whole exercise where they set up the prophets of Baal, set up all their sacrifices, and they screamed and hollered and did all kind of stuff all day long. And what happened? Nothing. Okay. And we know here's Elijah by himself, and he made the altar, and he he put the twelve stones around. And he said, "Let's just pour water all over this thing." And then he called on God. The fire fell. I believe we're going to see the fire fall in our day. The fire fell and it licked up all the water. And the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering. And all the dust. You can burn up the dust. That must be a pretty hot fire where the fire burned up all the dust. Uh, and the rocks. That's a, God, did God move? I believe we're going to see God move in powerful ways in our day. Now, it was when all the people saw it. So here's that phrase, all the people again. What did the people said when they first got the opportunity to say, who are you going to serve? What did they say? Nothing, okay? This time, what did they say? They fell, all the people fell on their faces. And they said, the Lord, he is God. They said it twice, the Lord, he is God. I believe we are living in a day. Well, me, they see something equally powerful as this. as like the Red Sea parting where people realize this isn't the result of any man. This is not the result of the church program. This is God intervening in history. I mean, this is the, I believe these are the days we're living in. Yes. And I believe we will see thousands and millions of people say, man, I was sitting on the bench before, but the Lord, He is God. Show me how I can serve Him. And we need to be people who are prepared to say, can I sit down? Let's talk about it. Let's sit down. Let's read Psalm 27 together. Can I walk through and just show you everything God is showing me to, be, to help me overcome some of the difficulties I've been through? Can we sit down and have coffee and talk about that? And I believe that the people will go from being saying nothing to say, I've got to have God. And the Lord wants people just like you and I to be there to help them. But here... There's a complete transformation. This happens in one day. They go from answering not a word to saying, proclaiming twice, the Lord, He is God. You know what I want to proclaim this morning? Would you do it with me? God, we say, the Lord, He is God. The Lord, You are God. And so, now I think it's interesting at this point, the 
Elijah told, tells uh, all the people to seize these 850 false prophets. And so who are the ones who went out and did the seizing? It says, they. Who are the they? It's all the people who were noncommittal 15 minutes before, and now they're saying, God, you are God. Show me what to do, and we'll do it. I believe we're going to see an avalanche, a tsunami, pick, up, pick whatever metaphor you want, of God moving in our day. Okay? He sees them there. Which... Yeah. Um, Andre, would you mind taking taking back to that summary that summary of, of those five things? Just put go back to that slide. So, I put the conscious. I put the context because I believe we're living in this day where we're, I believe we're seeing a separation of, of evil and people not committed to the Lord. I believe First Kings eighteen is right where we're living right now, and I believe we'll see God do amazing things to show up and intervene, intervene in history. And anyway, I just wanted to, we're, we're going to end this by taking communion, but I just want to say, this is given his, the context of where we are right now, that we can say, God, I'm in. We want to be able to study your word so we can recognize valid prophecy. And we can say, no, that's not, that's not, that's not God's speaking. But we can discern we can embrace valid prophecy. And the most prophetic way to, to find, the most important way to find valid, valid prophecy and to walk in it is by, it's right here, okay? But uh, uh, let's just take a moment and pray over this. God, we just thank you that we live in a day that was just like where Elijah was, where there was this desert of you moving because the people would turn their backs on you. But God, you didn't leave them there. They faced the consequences of their turning their back on you as a nation for a season. Three years is a long time without rain. And you had a plan to bring restoration. And part of that includes people just like Elijah, just like us, hearing from God. God, we just want to be able to hear what you're speaking in our day. We know that it might not be fulfilled in a moment. It doesn't diminish our faith at all because when we've heard from you, we know that you're going to do it. God, we just look forward with great expectations of those indications that the answer is on the way. And God, that we will see the fulfillment of it. God, we believe we will see a cascading tsunami of your moving in history in ways none of us could plan, none of us could orchestrate, and only people could say, look what God has done. And when that time comes, and show us what to do, how we can outrun evil and get where we need to be to be part of your answer to the days that we live in. In, in Jesus' name, amen.